Hi there, Sandra here from The Shulvin's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. I've got a dollar store Sunday for you where the main ingredients of all my projects come from dollar stores. I hope you like them. I'm starting off with this little birdhouse that I got at my local Dollarama store. I'm going to take the tag off and I don't need the little hanger on the top. I'm painting the body of the birdhouse with a color that I mixed together myself. It's sort of a sage green color, but you could use, of course, whatever color you'd like. I decided I wanted a little contrast, so I'm painting the bottom lip of the birdhouse in black, and I'm also going to paint the trim around the roof line black, but I'm not going to paint the actual top of the roof black. That is going to be white. The white is simply going to be my undercoat for what I'm going to be doing next. I just wanted it to be nice and bright. I was lucky enough to find this buffalo check or gingham napkins at the Dollar Tree. So excited when I found these. So I just took off the side that has the solid color. You can see the other side has the white in the center, but that looks really cool. You would maybe be able to use that as a frame for something else. Anyhow, struggling again, trying to get that second layer off, but here we go. I've got it. And what I'm going to do is just cut around the dotted edges. The texture on the outside of the napkins is always kind of got a dot design on it. You guys know what I mean if you look really closely at a napkin. Anyhow, I'm just going to cut that off because I just want to use the interior of it. Using Mod Podge, I'm going to go ahead and glue the napkin onto the roof of the house. Now the napkin has a nice crease in it from where the fold is, and that's what I'm going to place on the very peak of the roof, and that's going to help me make it nice and smooth. I'm not going to be putting any Mod Podge on the top of the napkin because a little bit of it came through. It's a little damp, and that's going to be enough to hold the napkin in place. There's tons of excess napkin, so I'm just going to trim it off a little bit first and then set the birdhouse aside and let the Mod Podge completely dry before I take the rest of the napkin off. Then I looked at it and I thought, well, the bottom doesn't look right. It kind of looks out of place, just solid black. So I'm taking some more Pod Podge and I'm going to do the same thing with the napkin all the way around the lip of the birdhouse bottom. I just placed the napkin down, rubbed it with my finger, and then cut off the excess and repeated that for the other three sides. Now the birdhouse is dry, so I'm taking some fine grit sandpaper and in a downward motion away from the napkin, away from the house, I'm just going to sand it down and get rid of all of that excess napkin. To add a little bit more fun to the front of the birdhouse because there's so much going on on the top and the bottom, it looked a little plain. So I have this little wood cutout flower that has a large enough hole in the center that I can put it through the perch of the birdhouse and glue it to the birdhouse itself. So I'm just going to be painting it black because that just blends in really well with my theme. I found these adorable containers. They are ceramic, but they look like enamel and they have fleur a jardin on it. And if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, sorry. What I'm going to be doing next is using the little glue gun to glue in some of the Spanish moss that I'm going to be putting on top of this foam. This little glue gun is from Hoto Tools. It's a smart glue gun, which means that it has a USB-C charging adapter. So this is a cordless little guy. It works by just charging it up with the USB-C cord that is included. And then you just push that power button up at the top and get it started. Now, what I really love about this is that it stops heating automatically after about three minutes of inactive use. That is definitely going to save from any glue dripping out of the nozzle when I'm not using it. So for example, as I'm cleaning off my desk here, I don't have to worry about any of the glue oozing out. The flashing dot that you see there means that it's heating up and it only takes 30 seconds to heat. 
Here's a quick look at the Hoto Smart Home Tools website. They have toolkits, they have things for in the kitchen, like a kitchen scale, a screwdriver kit. I've used their brushless drill and I love it. It's an amazing tool, really lightweight, and works really good with a bunch of power behind it. They also have a flashlight and a bunch of other tools that you're definitely gonna wanna check out. Here's a closer look at the glue gun. Like I said before, it has a 30 second heat up time. It charges with a USB-C cord, which is included, but it feels so good in your hand. That trigger isn't just for one finger. You've got a couple of fingers using the trigger. The other thing I love about it is that the glue comes out of a really fine tip nozzle. So it's perfect for all of the tiny little projects that I do. I've got a link to the HOTO website down in my description box along with a specific link for this glue gun. Go check them out, you will not be disappointed. I'll be using lots more of their tools in the future. Now I'm going to be cutting down this square dowel that I picked up from Dollarama. I'm going to need it a little bit shorter for what I want to do with the birdhouse. Using my HOTO glue gun again, I am going to squeeze out a little bit extra glue because I want the square dowel to have a good adhesion to the bottom of my birdhouse. Once I've got it hooked on there, I'm going to paint it black. I love lavender. Number one, purple is my favorite color. And number two, it's just so pretty and perfect for farmhouse decor. I'm going to take apart this branch that I have. It's got, I think, about six or seven sprigs of lavender on it. And I'm going to place those standing straight up right inside my little container. I like to stagger my florals so they're not all bunched together or in a straight line. Again, I'm going to use my Hoto glue gun and add a generous amount of glue to the bottom of the dowel and then place it inside the birdhouse towards the back. And I'm just gonna give it a good squish. What I ended up doing to make it a, be a little more sturdy is add a little bit more of that green styrofoam. And then I also glued that together with the dowel and glued the styrofoam then to the pot. I covered the green styrofoam with a little more Spanish moss and then added a sweet little buffalo check or gingham bow to the side of the container. And I think this turned out pretty sweet. I have tons of frames from when my kids were little and I plastered little baby pictures all over my house. So I've got this one, I believe it's a 10 by 13. I'm just going to be putting some of this scrapbook paper on the backing and fit it all in just with a glue stick. Then I'm going to put it right back into the frame including the glass. Now this glass is a little bit frosted, so it doesn't have quite the glare of normal glass. I'm just using a soft brush. It's actually quite a thick one, and I'm going to be dry brushing some white chalk paint on this. Now I started out fairly light and I thought I would like that little bit of wood showing through, but then I ended up going a little bit darker and I really like how this turned out. Now, if you're not as careful as I am and you wanna do this step without having the glass in, by all means, go for it. I just scraped off any of the paint using my fingernail if I got any on the glass. I found this really pretty birdcage wood cutout, so I'm just going to take off the tags and I'm not going to be using the clothespins either. I'm just going to give this a coat of white chalk paint. Now I'm not going to go around the edges because I like that darker wood look that it has, so I'm just going to try my best to not get any paint on the edges, just on the flat surface itself. 
Once the white was completely dry, I used some of my sage green paint that I used on the birdhouse and I started to dry brush just the greenery pieces, but I didn't really end up liking that. I think it would have been better if I would have just given them a solid green paint, but I flipped over to something different. I decided to hot glue some of this Dusty Miller onto the area where the greenery is. So all of that vine cutout, I decided to fill that up with some of this beautiful greenery. I love the color of this. It reminds me of a little mini lamb's ear. And I'm again, I'm using my Hoto little mini hot glue gun to attach everything in place. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I hope you're enjoying my content, and if you are, I would love it if you could hit that red button and stick around a while. I found these little braided pieces of jute twine at my Dollarama store, and I thought they were perfect for just covering up those two little holes where the twine was with the original clothespins. So I'm just going to take a section and just trim it down and fit it right over those, and I'll do the same thing at the bottom. And now that everything is complete, I'm going to be adding some hot glue to the back of my little birdcage decoration and I'll be gluing it right into the center of the frame. And I think this turned out really beautiful. It has a vintage look and I think it's going to make someone very happy in their home. I've got these two items here from Dollarama again. I'm just going to be popping off that little stand for the bird because I don't need it. And the paddle is a actually a barbecue scraping paddle and I thought it would be really fun to make this sort of look like a breadboard. I'm using that sage color again and I'm going to cover the whole thing front and back and sides with a couple of coats. Using some white chalk paint and a small brush, I'm going to give the bird also a couple of coats of paint, but I'm gonna try really hard not to get that little wood that's on the outside of the cutout of the wing. I would like to have that little bit of contrast, but I am going to be painting around the thicker edge of the bird itself. The flowers are going to stay those colors because I think they're absolutely beautiful. Using some more of those little wood cutout flowers, I'm going to be painting one with a darker sage color, and this is Eucalyptus by Martha Stewart Chalk Paints. And then the other ones, I'm going to do one in pink and one in sort of a coral color to match the florals that are on the bird. I don't have any pinks or corals, so I just use some cream, red, and orange paint to mix those up and get the right color. Now it's time for the assembly. I'm going to hot glue the bird to, towards the bottom of the board. And then I've got a stick that I grabbed from my backyard and I'm going to glue that on the bird's feet so it looks like a perch. Using my Cricut Joy with some Smart Vinyl, I cut out the words, Our Nest is Best, just in the white vinyl. And I'm going to apply that to the top part of the board. I like to use different fonts when I'm doing this. So our is and best are in Annie Liu and this nest is in Father Farmhouse. Now I'm just going to hot glue the little flowers in a random manner onto the board around the bird. And for some reason, I grabbed my regular glue gun and got these huge globs of glue underneath these delicate little flowers. So again, I should have been using my Hoto glue gun, but lesson learned, I will remember that for next time.
I wrapped some twine around the top and decided not to use the bow. I also grabbed some of this pink gingham ribbon and I thought it was way too bright to add anything of that into it. So what I ended up doing is cutting off the bow and adding a few more of these little sticks that I picked up from my garden and just adding that to the top along with one more of the wooden flowers painted white. I used the white that was left on my paintbrush to add a little bit of distressing around the edges of this board and this project turned out super cute as well. I used the rest of the paint that was on the brush to distress around the edges of the board and a little bit on top of it and I think this one turned out super cute too. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed my Dollar Store Sunday projects. If you did, please give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you can come back and see what I've got in store for you next time. Bye for now.